What's up guys, my name's Nate, welcome back to Real Steel Projects. Guys, today's video we're going to show you how to build this prop sword. This piece took just over an hour to build in total, and it only cost us about $40 from start to finish. During the video, you'll see us use a few different types of power tools, however all those can be substituted with hand tools. This is a great project for someone who's looking to get into the prop industry, or for a cosplayer looking for a new piece of their set, and it's a really satisfying build when you're finished. Let's not waste any more time guys, let's get stuck into it and bring this prop to life. Okay guys, so we start this video with a trip down to our local hardware store. For this build I chose a nice piece of 25mm round Tasmanian oak for our handle. I also used some 3x40mm wide aluminium flat bar for our blade, and one of these 25mm round rubber door stops for the pommel. Here you can see all the pieces together. Next up it's time to mark everything out. I'm going 175mm for the guard and 200mm for the handle. Next it's time to square these lines off, then we're going to mark the handle out for the width. For this particular piece, I'm only coming in about 7 or 8 millimeters for the handle. When marking out a guard, it's normally easiest to find the center of your piece first. From there we can decide just how wide we would like the guard to be at the ends. With simplicity in mind, this time I only made the guard 10 millimeter wide on the ends, and then I'm going to taper from the center points down to the 10 millimeter marks, giving us a full guard shape. Next it's time to mark out the hole in the centre of the guard for the sword's tang to go down. For this particular case, I'm not too worried about it being a real tight fit. I'm going to give about a millimetre clearance the entire way around, so it's a nice easy fit. Next up, it's time to mark out the tip for the sword. I'm going to give this one a pretty generous taper on it, it's going to have a bit more of an aggressive look to it. Now when it comes to marking out our handle's length, that's pretty easy. We're just going to lie it on top of our already existing line and trace it across. And now that all of our components are marked out, it's time to move on to cutting. I'm going to use an angle grinder for this section, but remember you can do all this with a hacksaw. It's important to say at this point when using any tools, but especially power tools to be safety conscious. Always remember your PPE, safety glasses or gloves, and never take the guard off any tools. Pretty much just don't do everything I'm doing here. Alright, don't forget to file those edges guys, make sure to get rid of any of those burrs. It was at this point in the build when I decided it might look a bit more interesting if I give the sword guard a bit of a bend. I marked each end at 12mm, stuck it in the vise and gave it a bend. This is the beauty of working with aluminium. Here's another good point to mark out that this isn't a weapon. I'm going to make sure that after I cut this tip to very very carefully blunt in the end of it and make sure that there's no sharp edges. Remember that as we're working with aluminium, every step that you see that we're doing here with power tools, you can do with hand tools. It's just going to take a little bit longer than it is for us. Tank cut, we can now fit our cross guard and get the first look of what our sword's going to look like when it's finished. Now it's on to cutting the wood. We cut the length first, then we clamp it in the vise and we separate the two pieces. As we don't have a lot of wood power tools, this step did take a long time. I used the belt sander to clean everything up, but this stage is entirely possible to do with a sanding block, just some regular sandpaper, or even the file that we were using earlier. As you can see now, our two handle scales are going to sandwich over our sword tang. Next up, time for some super glue or 5 minute epoxy to glue the two scales in place. I taped them and left them in the vise just to help them cure for a little while, and then for an extra measure, I put a couple of rivets in mine just to hold the scales in place. This step isn't 100% necessary, but as I wanted to swing this sword around, I thought it was a good idea to have some extra safety measures. Now we're going to shape the handle scales to match the sword tang. I'm just using a rough file here, and I'm going to go over it later on with sandpaper. I decided to put a bit more of a pattern into mine, so I'm doing a hexagonal shape with my filing. For our final step, it's time to put on that rubber stopper that we grabbed earlier. This just squeezes over the top of everything, sandwiching it all together and making a bit of a pommel look. Once that rubber stopper's on, you could almost call this build completed. You have a functioning sword prop now, although since we have the tools and time, let's take it to another level. 
Our hardware store sells these leather welding aprons for about $14. At that price you can justify cutting it up and using it for leather handles. Next up I spray the handle and the leather with an even coating of spray glue. I'm going to give it a few moments just for the glue to dry for a better stick. With spray adhesive sometimes the less is more approach is best. If you overcoat this it's going to take a lot longer for it to dry properly. Now we're just going to wrap it really tight around the handle and give it more of a medieval sword look. Again, you can finish the build right here and be happy with the result, although we're going to take it a few steps further. This Kiwi shoe buff is a perfect tool to use to bring this leather to a brown colour. Also, I'm going to give the pommel a couple coats with a bright silver just to finish the look off. And at this stage, I'm going to finally call this build completed. And that's it for today's video guys, thank you so much for watching, we're super pleased with how this piece came out in the end. Like we said in the intro, it only took just over an hour to complete this piece from start to finish. We did use some power tools, so if you're going to use hand tools, it's probably going to take a little bit longer, but the results should be the same nonetheless. If you want to support us guys, please leave a like, and maybe a comment on what you want to see us build next. Lastly, I'd like to thank our Patreon supporters. We really appreciate all the support that we get on that platform. We wouldn't be able to do our monthly giveaways that we host on our Instagram account without the Patreon support, so thank you so much guys. If you'd like to get involved in our monthly giveaways, make sure you head over to the Instagram account, follow us there, and leave a comment on whatever this month's giveaway is for the chance to win. But most of all guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Until next time, cheers.